Hello scholars, my name is Dr. Kara Spillen and the goal of this channel is to make academic subjects easier to understand. If you haven't already done so, please click the subscribe and like button so I can continue to make the videos that you are seeking. In the last video, we covered schizoid personality disorder. In this video, we're going to address schizotypal personality disorder. So let's begin. Hi everybody, my name is Dr. Kara Spillen. And for a person to be diagnosed with schizotypal personality disorder, they have to have the following features, starting with A, the individual will have constant trouble with social relationships, especially the interpersonal aspects of it. They're going to have a lot of discomfort trying to create and keep those social relationships, and oftentimes they won't want to keep them. They can show perceptual distortions or cognitive issues. Cognitive means thinking, so problems with their thinking. And I'll go more into this as we talk about some of the features. But for a person to have this type of disorder, they have to have at least five of the nine following characteristics. So the first factor has to do with the person's belief systems, and they may think that because they're thinking negatively about something, that something in the world has happened negatively like an earthquake because of the power of their own thinking. So essentially they believe that world events pertain to them in an illogical manner. The second feature is that the individual might have magical thinking or odd beliefs that influence their behaviors and they tend to be inconsistent with society's norms. So they may believe that they're telepathic, have a sixth sense, or be superstitious. The third feature is that the person might believe they have bodily perceptions that do not follow society's norms. An example of this might be a person feeling a cold chill throughout their body and they feel like maybe somebody that has died is close to them or that they can feel something around them. The fourth feature has to do with um, strange or odd thinking. So um, somebody might say, oh, well, I can see um, part of you feels weird colored and I'm not sure what that means or um, I think there's something stuck in your body. The, the way that they're talking about it is very broad and people can kind of jump into that and say, oh yeah, well, my stomach's not been feeling good today. Wow, you must be psychic or something like that. And that when they're predicting things or they're saying that they see things, um, they're, the words tend to be very broad. The fifth feature has to do with paranoia or superstitions that they will have um, one or both of those. Number six, their mood might be inappropriate or they might hold them back from the social situation. Number seven, they may have an appearance or behaviors that are particularly odd, unique, or even eccentric. Number eight, they may lack friends or confidants other than first degree relatives. Number nine, they may have a high degree of social anxiety that does not go away even when they become familiar with the individuals. They can even become very paranoid of others that are around them and believe that they want ill will done to them. So B says that if a person has already schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, a depressive disorder with psychotic features or has autism spectrum disorder, they cannot have schizotypal personality disorder. So again, I want to reiterate that the big difference between schizoid personality disorder and schizotypal personality disorder is that schizotypal has the element of the perceptual disorders or the magical thinking about oneself that does not come along with schizoid personality disorder. So I know sometimes people have a little trouble distinguishing between the two. It's like adding on the isolation, adding on the not wanting to have social relationships. Schizotypal is when you're putting in those odd magical thinking beliefs or the perceptual body beliefs that they're feeling something outside of 
themselves. So individuals with schizotypal personality disorder tend to be superstitious or believe in paranormal activities. And please keep this in mind that are outside of society's norms. Even in the last 10 years, there's been differences um, in people's belief systems with paranormal events. These individuals can often kind of mirror um, autism spectrum disorder because these individuals don't tend to pick up on the clues of others uh, when they're trying to relate and because of that they'll have trouble kind of establishing a relationship from the beginning even when they see the person over and over again there's going to be that social anxiety that comes up and they don't tend to feel better given how many times they've seen that person they may appear overly stiff um, with others or their body language is one that they don't look interested in what the people are saying and so individuals have trouble feeling comfortable around these people. Um, their dress can be ill-fitting or doesn't really match with the rest of society or society's norms. That can also be on the autism spectrum too. So just so you know that. They will often have a difficult time taking part in just minimal conversation with others. So persons with schizotypal personality disorder often have problems relating with others. They may sometimes express unhappiness about not having those relationships with others, um, but they don't really put in the effort to establish you know, real interpersonal relationships with others. So they might say that that's what they want, but essentially that's not really what they want. They will not tend to have friends other than first degree relatives. When an individual with schizotypal personality disorder does come in for help from a clinician, it tends to be for anxiety and depression rather than their personality disorder. These individuals can have psychotic episodes lasting for minutes or hours. Uh, these episodes don't tend to last long enough to be diagnosed as brief psychotic disorder or schizophreniform disorder, and over 50% will have major depressive disorder in their lifetime. If an individual has schizotypal personality disorder, they may be also likely to have schizoid personality disorder, paranoid personality disorder, avoidant personality disorder, and borderline personality disorder. Generally, schizotypal personality disorder is found in 4.6% of the population. There is only a small percentage of individuals that go on to develop schizophrenia or another psychotic disorder. This disorder can develop in childhood or adolescence and may show the following characteristics while in childhood. Isolation, poor peer relationships, not achieving or doing well in school, social anxiety, hypersensitivity, peculiar thoughts, and strange fantasies. Children with this disorder often appear strange or odd and they can be teased by other children. It might also be hard to distinguish between other personality disorders and schizotypal personality disorder. This disorder can share characteristics with avoidant personality disorder, paranoid personality disorder, schizoid personality disorder, as well as narcissistic personality disorder. Individuals with schizotypal personality disorder will have psychotic-like symptoms that can get worse when the person is under a lot of stress. So remember too that individuals can have multiple personality disorders at the same time as well. So these can be particularly hard not only to diagnose, but also to treat. Um, we don't tend to have a lot of therapies that work well with the individuals unless they are really wanting to change and to see a difference in their life. So, well, that is the end of this video. I hope that you enjoyed it and I will keep trying to plug away and get as many videos done as I can before the school year starts up again. Thank you so much. I appreciate all of you. And drop me a comment here or there saying how you're doing on your stuff. And um, thank you. Thank you so much for all that you do. Bye-bye.